Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to From the Depths with me, Zicargo. We're here in the garage once again, looking at a new thing. Now, this turret came from a, uh, a cruiser design I was working on. I was trying to just plug the laser anti-munition system that I had on the cruiser, and I ended up with this little turret here. Now, this turret reminded me of another craft that I had a long time ago. I don't believe I've shown it to you guys, but it was a defensive buoy. And I thought, hmm... Can I make a laser weapon that's vaguely effective and small and then turn it into some sort of defensive buoy? Could I do it? So I ended up making this little laser turret here. All right, so I've cracked open the side of the laser here so that you guys can see what's going on. Uh, we've got the laser, the coupler, the cavity, the three meter pumps, and then storage cavities all the way down to down here where we've added a couple of destabilizers. This laser has an AP of 60 with no boosts. That's right, it's a no Q switch laser. What we've done is we've added destabilizers to it in order to increase the amount of energy it uses per shot. And then I basically just kind of tuned that uh, to get the approximate fire rate that I wanted. So it's only 260 damage per shot, which is not very much for a laser, but it's very high AP, meaning you can go through uh, a plique and ERA and destroy you know, little small bits. It's a good harass weapon, basically. And I ended up deciding that this was not strong enough uh, to make to justify an entire craft. So what I decided to do is I thought, well, taking a look at how the buoy itself floated in the water, I observed that it wasn't very stable, that the weight of the turret had a huge impact on how it was leaning from one side to the other. So I, I decided I was going to add some little, like, pontoons to the buoy. And this uh, is what... <laughs> happened as a result. I basically just toyed around with simple weapons and small weapon configurations until I got all of these. So, so to start off with, we've got a 150 casemate with some junk in the trunk. Now we'll go over the junk in the assorted trunks of all of all of these uh, in a minute. But to start off, uh, I basically have two variants of the 150 casemate. And then I have a whole uh, detector array. So this is a bunch of different random detectors uh, with attached receivers and whatnot that's all on a turret so that it could look at an opponent and get fairly accurate detections on it. I have a vertical launch missile that's pretty tucked away and, and low profile. Uh, it's a pretty big missile. I guess you can see this one's particular junk drill. I also added a small missile launcher uh, and then a 40 millimeter simple weapon AA uh, and then this right here is a 130 millimeter casemate that's on a half meter offset uh, from a piston. So there's a there's a turret and then on the turret is a piston and then that goes a half a meter off and then the casemate is on that. It's got a little bit of duckle work done. I'm really happy with how this one looks, actually. I just wish that the, uh, the, the front here was a little bit symmetrical. And then of course, a 94 millimeter simple weapon. So the idea here is basically, I think I'm going to put spin blocks here on a bit of an angle and I'm going to add some structural bracing and I'm going to attach all of these side buoys. Why is that one blue? Alright, uh, what was I saying? We're going to attach some structural bracing and we're going to put uh, eight of these on here and then we're going to have the central big buoy with all of its little side buoys. And I also came up with, uh, with this little thing. So really quick. I'll go through the junk in the trunk and the little dangle over here. So the little dangle is pretty simple. It's just a spin block. I think I'm going to attach this spin block to the turning of the buoy so that it's constantly moving. Uh, and it's got a sonar decoy. Uh, that's the right word that I'm looking for. A sonar decoy on the bottom. So this will be attached to the bottom of the main buoy and uh, it will constantly be turning around while attracting torpedoes. So hopefully torpedoes uh, will prioritize this and, you know, won't just hard counter uh, this thin little tube covered in alloy. And so then uh, just to take a quick look at what we've got here, we've got a uh, ACBs for the sonar, we've got fuel, we've got a small engine generator underneath the 150 casemate over here, uh, and then we've got some various material storage and a single repair bot. Over here, we've got a single repair tentacle, some more storage, uh, an ECM, as well as ACBs for the ECM, and another fuel engine generator over here, just for redundancy and whatnot. Over here, we've got a repair, some materials, a spin block, 
This spin block allows the base of part of this to sort of be inside of itself. That's just the way it had to be. Uh, feels kind of bad, man. I do try to avoid that wherever I can. Over here, this is still a, a, this is a VTOL missile. It's got an ejector on one side and a wireless receiver on the other, so it will launch its missile up. Now, when it comes to the missile itself, I haven't really decided anything. I think I'm going to settle on all of the shells for the different simple weapons before I customize the missile, and the missile will be to, you know, fill in the gap. All right, now for the small missiles, we've got a design that I'm actually quite fond of. It's a regulator with the thrust on the missiles turned down to 104. They're not super fast, but uh, they pack quite a bit of punch for being a small missile. And I've uh, got one of them set to an active radar seeker and the other one set to an infrared seeker. If I need to, I would be more than happy to, to crank up the fuel in the APN and drop the warheads down on this. But for the time being, I think I want to leave it like this, uh, at least until... You know, uh, testing, testing, if testing gives me a reason to change it, then we'll change it. But for now, this is the missile that we're going with, because I like it. Up next, we got a little bit more ammo, because we need it, as well as some material storage and another repair bot, and then some more of the same over here. Pretty stock standard stuff, finishing out the last one. Now, the trick is going to be uh, putting all of these together. So with the magic of video editing, I'm going to go do that real quick. All right. So here we are. Uh, I've gone ahead and attached pretty much everything to the side of the old, the old main chassis. I filled out the main chassis and I've been messing around with uh, replacing some parts with lead and some parts with alloy until we got this roughly uh, even sort of distribution here went ahead and covered up where all the spin blocks are at and i've attached the uh sonar dongle to the trunk of <laughs> of the bottom of the main buoy anyway i still haven't decided on a missile yet but i have decided on some of the uh what shells i want these to fire now the 94 millimeter shell uh, i've used this simple weapon quite a lot and i'm a really big fan of simply high velocity uh, squash heads on these 94 millimeter shells the 130 this is a simple weapon that i've usually avoided because its fire rate is so much slower than the 94 millimeter over here that i always find it difficult to use uh, a shell at this fire rate so what i've decided is that i'm gonna go with a whole bunch of emp and a disruptor conduit now i'm not the biggest fan of emp in its current implementation However, I'm a big fan of disruptor conduits, and uh, this is a pretty small EMP weapon, so almost 300 damage on the pulse, might be able to destroy one or two blocks, uh, and then more importantly, it will reduce shield strength to 85% of the shield's current value. This is the point of it. It's an anti-shield weapon. Uh, we are, of course, using a laser, so being able to drastically drop shields, I figure it might be pretty important. On one of the 150mm casemates, we are using this shell. Now, this is a shell that I've used before. It's a pretty slow shell at only 600 meters a second, but it's got a lot of HE pumped into two uh, heat charges, which hopefully should be able to do pretty substantial internal damage if they hit in the right spot. And then if we take a look over here at the other 150 casemate, we have a different shell, which is a pretty similar setup, which is just, but just frag HE. This is much better at actually destroying uh, just the outside armor blocks of whatever it's firing at. So hope we've got a party mix of shells so far. For the small missiles, I did end up dropping the regulator and adding another fuel tank and almost doubling their move speed, although not quite, so these missiles are much more agile. All right, now that we have most of this thing together, I'm going to do a little bit of testing to get the sonar decoy where I want it and to figure out what sort of missile I want to fire out of the VTOL. I'm also going to give these shells a quick test and uh, do a little bit more work on the body, just making it look a little bit better in some places, and then... I'll be back for a test of the finished product. All right, so I think I've got this sonar buoy spinning at the speed and power I want it to spin at. We'll have to, yes, yes. Okay, so we are testing these against the torpedoes of the Dryad. Now they're, I'm testing against these because they're small torpedoes and they're fairly agile. So if anything could hit this, uh, or if anything was likely to hit this, it would be the Dryad's torpedoes. Now I think it'll still hit occasionally, However, these torpedoes, if they were hitting the main body, 
uh, would pretty much go through the allied alloy and then almost immediately destroy the laser. So this, e even if it just distracts for one volley, uh, doubles the amount of time the main craft has against its foe, so it's still possible that they'll uh, hit by chance. Although it seems like, my word, it seems like it's definitely very good at evading them. So I'm very happy with how this, uh, this little sonar dongle has turned out. On to the missile. See you soon. So I've been fiddling around with this uh, missile for quite a while. Now you might be saying to Kruko, what the, what the hell is this? Do you know that each one of those warheads is slightly less effective than the last one? So you're waiting. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, hear me out. Uh, I, initially, I had a signal processor and a reinforced thing and another fuel tank and it was a little faster and then I said you know what no okay this is a single VTOL missile it is the heavy hitter uh, of this entire craft it needs to be able to do a substantial amount of damage I was thinking about a pretty narrow uh, frag a high-speed narrow frag with the signal processor sort of design uh, and I fiddled around with that, but I decided it's just not as cool as going all in on the damage. So that we are sticking with a 60 degree cone. This missile does approximately 192,000 damage at 4 AP. That's how much firepower is in this single missile. So if it hits something, it should blast a hole right where it hits. And hopefully it should destroy whatever is behind that hole as well. And potentially even... Uh, that holds friends and family uh, alongside the rest of the craft. So this missile, it it's a lot of damage for a medium missile. Alrighty, so originally this was the Gremlin Laser Turret. So by proxy, this thing got named the Gremlin Laser Buoy. Uh, but I think it needs a bit of a new name. You see, I see a larger central thing with an eye on it and a face and then a whole bunch of appendages. So I'm thinking about calling this the Beholder something or other. But it needs a more technical name than that. Like, uh, I don't know. I'll let you know what I come up with. And I've done a couple of things. The first is I've uh, set up our power priorities here so that the sonar decoy will not turn off. One of the things I found in the testing is that uh, the sonar decoy held up really well against anything using torpedoes. However, if we lost a little bit of power or as the fight drug on and our batteries went low, the sonar decoy would lose a little bit and then we'd get hit with torpedoes and it was pretty much GG from there. So we set up our power priorities such that the sonar decoy is the last thing that turns off uh, because it keeps us in the fight. We've also added down here in a bit of a material storage thing, uh, we've just added some AI cards down here, a target prioritization with negative per range. So basically this thing will always shoot at the closest foe to it. Uh, and then over here, an aim point selection so that we will always shoot above water. This is definitely something that I noticed. I knew it could be a problem, uh, and I wasn't sure how much of a problem it would be, because for, for the cannons to shoot just below the waterline is fine, uh, but the laser, it, it just, it was just way too frequent uh, for me to leave that sort of unaddressed. Now I'm going to keep testing this against the Dryad, because the Dryad has a variety of weapons, including torpedoes, uh, and I think it's pretty good. So we're going to spawn the Dryad quite a ways away and just see how this matchup goes. I'm going to save it real quick. Get my uh, my guy off of it. Catch my camera. All right. So we've been firing our, uh, our lasers at it, our cannons at it. We've got the missile coming in. Uh, can I slow down time while time is paused? I'm going to find out. Yes. Yes, I can. There's a missile. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the damage does split off, but some of it came in here. I don't think it broke anything, though. Looks like we're kind of hollowing a bit of a hole through the front of it, and it's gotten in range, so it's turning to broadside. Now, one of the big things that's definitely going to determine this fight has a lot to do with whether or not the torpedoes target this decoy down here or not. So as long as those torpedoes are missing the decoy and the decoy is on, uh, I'm pretty sure this Dryad is at a pretty major disadvantage. 99-75%. Pretty decisive victory. Oh, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for watching. This has been the Beholder Defense Matrix build. I'm trying to figure out what parts of the build process to leave in and which parts to take out, and I feel like I struck a decent balance on this 
particular video. If there's anything you wanted to see that you didn't get to, let me know. Uh, and the target for this particular video, for the Beholder Defense Matrix to go up on the Steam Workshop, is going to be 25 likes. Thank you all very much uh, for that extra click. It really helps the channel spread, and the new subs are proof that there are people who don't know about my channel who would be happy to watch my videos. And as I've said before, uh, hopefully the point is that more people uh, can enjoy the videos. Also, something I found out about this craft that I find rather adorable is that Rambot himself is actually strong enough to push the thing. So if you were <laughs> if you were sitting on this buoy and a cram shell was coming in, you could actually just be like, run into the side and push the whole thing at about three meters a second. And if you add in a little bit of a, you, yep, yep, you can get a little bit of a twist going there. Yep. Yeah. You don't, you don't even need a control station. Rambot himself uh, is more than strong enough to push this thing faster than its main propulsion can actually move it, uh, as well as force it to turn. That's going to be it for the video. Thank you all very much for watching. I've been Cargo. This has been fun. I'll see you guys soon. Now, farewell.